Hello, enthusiasts, and welcome back to the channel. We've all been there. That moment when you pop open a jar of weed and the room instantly fills with that rush of aroma. But have you ever wondered why weed smells the way it does? Why some strains burst with sweetness while others reek of skunk or diesel? That aroma isn't random. It's pure science. Today we're diving into terpenes, the natural compounds that give cannabis its scent, flavor, and personality. We'll break down how they form, what they do, and why the smell of weed is so much more than just fragrance. It's science and plant magic working together. So let's start with why the aroma of cannabis hits harder and more memorably than almost anything else in nature. Chapter 1. The Science of Scent Our sense of smell is powerful. One whiff can pull you back to a summer morning, spark a burst of energy, or calm your entire nervous system. That same hardwired connection is why the aroma of cannabis hits differently than almost any other plant. You're not just catching a pleasant scent. You're decoding a chemical fingerprint that's unique to that flower. When it comes to cannabis, what you smell isn't the plant matter itself. It's terpenes. Terpenes are the tiny, volatile, aromatic compounds produced by the plant's glands and are responsible for its distinct scents. Once airborne, they travel straight to the olfactory bulb in your brain, which is directly connected to the limbic system. This region processes memory, pleasure, and emotion. That's why a single sniff can make you feel nostalgic, uplifted, or instantly relaxed. Chapter 2. Nature's Chemistry Lab Cannabis produces over 200 different terpenes, and each one plays its part in shaping the plant's signature aroma. So why does the cannabis plant even make terpenes? Turns out it's not for us. Terpenes evolved as a survival mechanism. These aromatic compounds protect plants from predators, attract pollinators, and help regulate temperature and stress. In cannabis, terpenes form within the resin glands known as trichomes, which are the tiny, crystal-like structures that also produce cannabinoids like THC and CBD. Those sparkling little crystals coating the buds are tiny chemical factories working overtime to produce both THC and terpenes. But while THC gets all the attention for the high, terpenes are what make the experience flavorful and distinct. Light intensity, temperature, and CO2 levels all influence how many terpenes a plant can produce. When plants have a steady supply of CO2, they photosynthesize more efficiently, giving them the extra energy needed to build and store those complex aromatic compounds. Elevated CO2 not only boosts growth, but can also enhance essential oil production, leading to stronger, more vibrant aromas. That's why the best growers don't just feed their plants, they cultivate an ecosystem around them. Because the richer the environment, the richer the aroma. Chapter 3. The Aroma Spectrum as most of us know, not all weed smells the same. Cannabis has one of the most complex aroma profiles in the entire plant kingdom. From fruity and floral to gassy or downright funky, all those wildly different scents come from the same source. Terpenes. There are hundreds of terpenes out there, and unfortunately there are far too many to cover in one video. So instead, let's focus on the ones you're most likely to come across. Myrcene, which is the most common terpene in cannabis, gives off a deep, earthy, musky scent. Think mango mixed with damp soil. It's actually the same compound that gives hops their smell in beer and lemongrass its warm sweetness. Myrcene is believed to have sedative and relaxing effects, which is why it's often dominant in indica-leaning strains. When people describe weed that locks you to the couch, myrcene is usually part of that reason. Limonene smells like a peeled orange or lemon zest, which is why it's also found in citrus peels and used in cleaning products. Limonene has been linked to mood elevation, anti-stress effects, and even antimicrobial benefits that help protect the plant from pests. It is common in energetic, sativa-dominant strains, and it's a big reason those strains make you feel happy, giggly, and refreshed. Pinene smells like pine trees and fresh-cut wood, it's one of the most abundant terpenes in nature and is found in herbs like rosemary, basil, and conifers. In cannabis, pinene acts almost like nature's decongestant, opening airways and sharpening focus. It's been studied for potential memory-boosting properties and may counteract some of THC's fogginess. Strains high in pinene often deliver a crisp, 
clear-headed effect that helps when work needs to be done. Caryophylline brings the spice with hints of black pepper, cloves, and even that diesel-like funk some people call pepper gas. What makes this terpene fascinating is that it's technically both a terpene and a cannabinoid, as it can bind directly to the body's CB2 receptors, giving it anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving effects. Caryophylline's punchy aroma tends to dominate in more robust, spicy strains, which are the ones that make your nose tingle when you crack open the jar. Linalool carries the gentle floral aroma found in lavender and contributes to a calm and relaxing effect. It's abundant in mint and rosewood and has long been studied for its potential to reduce anxiety and promote sleep. Linalool-rich strains often feel soothing, melting away tension both mentally and physically. If your bud smells like perfume, fresh linen, or a spa candle that's linalool. Now that we've covered some background on today's topic, we just wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Exhale Homegrown CO2 Company. They offer one of the most practical and reliable ways to introduce natural carbon dioxide into your grow. For over 20 years, Exhale has taken the science of fungal respiration and turned it into a clean, controlled, and highly effective solution for indoor gardening. Each bag is thoughtfully designed to meet the needs of real-world growers, from small home tents to fully sealed commercial rooms. It's a true plug-and-play system. Just hang the bag above your canopy and the fun guy inside get to work, producing a steady stream of CO2. This is possible because inside each bag is a proprietary substrate that serves as the fungi's food source, along with a patented, non-fruiting mycelium strain developed specifically for steady, reliable respiration. What really sets Exhale apart is that they were the first to bring the CO2 bag concept to market. While plenty of imitators have followed, none match Exhale's consistency or quality. That's why every product carries the original CO2 bag seal. So when you see that label, you know you're getting proven performance. And here's something special for our October monthly giveaway. Exhale will be providing one Cannabis Guy channel member with a free Exhale CO2 bag. This model delivers a steady 1300 ppm of CO2 for up to six months and is rated for grow spaces up to four by four feet or 120 cubic feet. For more information about Exhale and their products, Go to the video summary and visit their website at exhaleco2bags.com. While you're there, check out our promo codes from Exhale. It's a great way to save if you're ready to give it a try. Now let's get back to today's topic. Chapter 4. Growing for Smell If you've ever wondered why some buds smell incredible and others barely smell at all, it's not luck. It's biology and handling. During the flowering stage, terpene production peaks. This is when plants put everything into creating those aromatic oils. But terpenes are very fragile and extremely sensitive to light, heat, and oxygen. That means growers have to handle them like fine wine. If buds dry too quickly or under too much heat, terpenes evaporate. If buds are left curing in open air for too long, oxidation will dull their scent. The perfect cure is slow and steady while maintaining around 60% humidity and cool temperatures, ultimately locking those terpenes inside the buds until the moment you grind them up. Most cures last at least two to four weeks, though many growers stretch it to six or even eight to bring out the full depth of flavor, aroma, and resin quality. During this process, buds are stored in airtight jars and burped daily to release excess moisture, letting chlorophyll break down while preserving those sticky aromatic oils. Even the trimming process matters. Touching buds too much can crush trichomes and release those oils before the jar is even sealed. That's why the pros wear gloves, keep environments cool, and work fast. And while we're keeping it natural here, it's worth mentioning that well-balanced environments rich in fresh air and natural CO2 give plants more resources for terpene synthesis. When the plant breathes better, it expresses better and your nose can tell. And that's a wrap on today's episode. Whether you're dialing in your setup or just getting your hands in the soil for the first time, remember, this is a journey, and every small improvement adds up to bigger and better results. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your story.
and what techniques have worked best for you. Your insights help fuel this community and shape future videos. And if you want to dive even deeper, consider becoming a Cannabis Guy channel member. You'll unlock access to monthly giveaways, exclusive content, loyalty badges, member-only discount codes, and much, much more. It's a great way to support the channel, stay informed, and grow right alongside an amazing group of cultivators. Before we sign off for this video, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to all of our subscribers for supporting the channel, and an extra shout out to our amazing members. At the end of this video, I've included a special thank you to this channel's top supporters, so stick around to see your names featured. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay curious, my friends.